The first time I went down to the National Drug Intelligence Bureau in Wellington and walked in, I wondered if I should perhaps maybe be taking my toothbrush with me. You know, I wondered if maybe I was going to get out. Um, but my experience of dealing with the New Zealand police uh, over the last year has actually been very positive. And enforcement have shown a genuine amount of goodwill to work with this act and to work with this industry. And last year when I went to the Federal Police Conference in Australia, and uh, senior police officers from the Australian Federal Police were there, and Detective Inspector Stuart Mills stood up from New Zealand and tried to explain to his peers in Australia why we were regulating low-risk psychoactives. You can imagine the looks he had. I thought they did a bloody good job, to be honest, and it's a real privilege and pleasure for us to have New Zealand Police here today. Please put your hands together for Inspector Rob Doandum. Right, my name's Rob Doandum. I'm an inspector based at uh, Police National Headquarters in the Criminal Investigations Group. Um, I'm not here today to debate um, drug policy or decriminalisation of cannabis or all the wider issues around drugs, but I've been invited here to talk about our role um, in terms of the introduction of this Act and what's been happening up until, until this time. So hopefully it will be an informative um, session um, and I look forward to meeting up with other people later on. Um, so why am I here today? to explain the police role in respect to the Act and secondly provide details of how police believe they're fulfilling their responsibility to the community by enforcing key provisions within the Act. <coughs> so the current situation, the Act was passed into law in July last year and uh, it would be fair to say we're still in the middle of a shakedown period in terms of the Act which you've just heard about. Um, there has been the establishment of a licensing regime, approval of substances by a new authority. Uh, there's the introduction of retailing, supply, manufacture of approved substances. There's a code of practice for manufacturing that's been introduced. Uh, we've gone through a stage of uh, firstly education and secondly enforcement. Uh, and there's an increasing amount of community awareness, um, high visibility, dialogue and feedback happening. Um, it would be fair to say there has been a lot going on in a very short time. Just to put some context around where we got to at the moment, um, some background. Prior to the Act, new, um, new psychoactive substances were emerging in de derivative forms. Um, the issuing of notices to bring them within the existing legal framework at the time for enforcement purposes was becoming quite difficult. Um, Products began flooding the marketplace um, that were new and in some cases had potential um, harm. Risk to health, involvement by vulnerable young persons in particular, addiction to support habits um, was causing widespread community concern. The impact on law enforcement. <coughs> the good side of this from our point of view is that the situation has become a lot clearer because you've now got an act and um, you've got some structure um, around this. You've got a regulated um, manufacturing and supply undertaken now by a fairly small group of people. So again you've got a higher level of visibility. Um, there's several offences that have been created which is easier now to prosecute than it was under the old legislation that we were working with. Potentially the bad side uh, could be that unapproved substances may transfer to the illicit market uh, out of sight, out of mind. Um, or the illicit market may try to take up a share in the illegit legitimate market. Um, while we've seen synthetic cannabinoids being sold by some criminal groups, in general the transfer does not seem to be significant at this stage. However, if illicit sales do take place, police now have greater powers to prosecute those. So if you don't have a licence, it's, uh, it's illegal unapproved substance sales, then that's illegal. Some police action. Police um, alerted retailers early, and in fact even before the release of the Act, I, I recall just a few weeks beforehand, um, regarding upcoming changes so that 
the advent of non-trading from um, dairies and convenience stores, for instance. Uh, and that was done for the purpose of um, getting the um, retailers' heads around what issues were going to be coming up here and, um, and indicating you know, there were, would be future requirements. So when it was introduced, police and DHB staff made regular visits checking on licences and products. Um, most people dealing with retailers uh, from that point onwards till today are from dedicated harm reduction units and they also deal with alcohol so the benefit of that is that they've actually got previous knowledge of the effects of alcohol abuse and, and working with a sector and a group um, and the issues that then um, bounce back into the community. As um, the most recent periods concluded, police have made retailers fully aware that they would be asking for a high level of compliance and that offences detected after this time would be fully investigated and prosecution action taken or the Psychoactive Substances Licensing Authority would be notified in respect to their licence and et cetera. <coughs> the current industry picture, um, as you can see, we've come from an um, unregulated, unregulated environment of three to 4,000 um, places where you could uh, obtain substances which were around convenience stores, etc., dairies, down to 150 licences, um, 200 plus unregulated products down to 42 at the moment, uh, and unknown, well, unknown or very little information about who is manufacturing, importing, wholesaling, or actually bringing the product to the market, whereas now there's a, quite a small number of licence holders. Current enforcement situation, there's an ongoing focus on retail outlets and compliance with the Act. Um, one of the ways that we are tackling the issue with the vulnerability of people under the age of 18 that's been written into the Act is around um, undertaking controlled purchase operations as we do for alcohol currently. We're finding that quite effective. Um, it's focusing the retailers on the fact that, look, we've got to be checking ID. Uh, there's some issues here um, and uh, we will take action um, if we find people selling to people under 18. Uh, prosecutions, uh, there are prosecutions for deliberate non-compliance, lessons learned and issues that have had a negative impact on uh, customers and the community are being examined and used to inform potential regulation changes. Um, some of these could include hours of opening, volume of sales, um, barcoding of products in terms of the manufacturing process. There's quite a number of areas um, that the regulations um, uh, will be looking at um, and we'll be liaising with the Ministry of Health around um, our learning on this and, um, and leave that with them. A number of workarounds to avoid compliance by retailers have been discovered, uh, but we've taken action against those, and I'm talking about things like repackaging of products where you may put unapproved old products into new products, um, under-counter sales. Uh, we had one instance of a person working in a dairy who was selling out of their own pocket, uh, not the owner, but somebody else. Um, so that you are going to get these workarounds, but we are advised of this It's um, quite often and we take some action against it. Um, we have recently uh, seen an, an increase in some individuals with abuse or addiction style problems um, and they have become more obvious and um, there's plenty of um, coverage in the media recently about issues outside retail shops and, and people who have been found affected. Um, there are a small number of people who wish to profit from on sales to miners so in other words, buying um, a significant amount of product and then finding their own way to go and sell it. Um, and we've been following up on any of those cases that come to our attention because they're potentially serious. Current prosecutions and license refusals. Um, latest figures from about a week ago, I suppose. It may have slightly changed by now, but um, there's 52 charges under the act so far are pretty much across the board. Um, there's been several licences refused or suspended. The refusals and suspensions included applicants who provided false or misleading information or who were deemed to have premises that just weren't suitable under the Act. 
Um, six, six products have been recalled, uh, mainly due to bad reactions. And um, 13 convictions so far in court. So the current situation is, from the police perspective, um, there are many, you know, police have a responsibility to the community where there's disorder, crime or harm. And therefore, when we're notified of incidents that um, may be occurring close to retailers or in a public space, we, we will respond and we have been responding um, and dealing with whatever is confronting us at that time. Um, many media articles have highlighted continuing addiction and addiction issues and some uh, violence associated with it, with um, temporarily approved products. Local area laws uh, to try to prohibit them from as many areas as possible have begun to emerge. Police will continue to respond to community concerns, maintain the peace and advise on enforcement related issues as the uh, debate unfolds and the Act um, starts to bed into place. Police definitely acknowledge community concerns about the availability of products from retail outlets and will continue to respond accordingly. We're also maintaining a close watch on any developing trends affecting the wider drug sector and the influence that the uh, Psychoactive Substances Act is having. Um, the industry. There have been some early teething problems. Um, but there is by now a higher level of awareness around compliance issues and um, undertaking, um, and undertaking um, the business that they're in. The introduction of regulations to support the provisions uh, within the Act should hopefully help to make um, our enforcement practices clearer and be a lot clearer for um, retail licence holders in particular. Um, the code of manufacturing is now developed and being implemented. Um, and one question that I have for the um, for the industry really is: Is there a need for further industry standards to address community concerns over sales to vulnerable people? Because this seems to be the major tension that's sitting in communities at the moment that the police are having to respond to um, continually. Um, police will continue to expect a higher level of compliance with the provisions of the Act. That is the underlying. Um, feature. Next steps. Police will maintain their core role of enforcement. That is our core role in terms of this Act coming in um, and we will assist the Ministry of Health who are the lead agency for the Act in terms of enforcement and work with them. We will listen to and respond to community concerns and we, we always have and we always will and we're definitely interested in any issues around harm and particularly young people. And we also pledge to work with others to help reduce harm uh, that may, may be caused. Lastly, how can you or how can anyone help? We want to know about, in particular, unlicensed retailers or prohibited premises, sales to under 18s and sales of illegal products because these are the, the lead factors for, that can create the most harm. Um, and we also want to know about ongoing concerns of the community. What are they seeing, hearing, how is this impacting on people? We'd really like to know about that because um, then we can analyse it and share it with others. Um, so lots of uh, numbers you can call there, Crime Stoppers and the Psychoactive Substances Hotline. And uh, that's it from me. Right. Thank you very much.